Hello and welcome to Answering ATPL. This video is the second video of a three-part series concerning the topic of direction. The first video discusses the basic of direction. In this video, we will look into the component of direction and in part 3, we will discuss grid direction or sometimes referred to as grid navigation. Section 1. Direction Components Direction can be divided into two components which consist of datum and line. Direction datum consists of true magnetic compass and grid. The direction line are subdivided into course, track, heading and bearing. In navigation, a meaningful direction need both of these components for example through course through track magnetic track compass heading and so on section 2 direction line in this section we will look into the direction line course track heading Course is defined as the desired or intended track. It is measured from true north. Track is defined as direction of the aircraft pass over the ground. It may be measured from true or magnetic north. Heading is defined as the direction in which the fore and aft axis of the aircraft is pointing. It may be measured from true or magnetic north. An aircraft need to fly from A to B. The line drawn from A to B is known as course. Wind is reported blowing from the left. If the aircraft fly with its nose pointed toward the destination, it will end up here. Our aircraft have been drifted off course due to the wind. The actual path of the aircraft in relation to the ground is known as track and it is marked by the green line on the screen. The direction where the aircraft is pointing is known as heading and it is marked by the blue line on the screen. This is the wrong way to fly. The correct way to fly is by pointing the aircraft nose into the wind. The direction where the aircraft is pointing is known as heading. By doing this, the wind will blow the aircraft to the right. This will cause the track to be the same as the course. This is the correct way to fly. The situation before can be simplified using a velocity vector. Let's say you want to fly from point A to point B. The line that you mark on the map from point A to point B is your course. To fly efficiently, track and course need to be the same. However, the length of this line is not the ground distance between A and B, but it is the ground speed. Next, we need to mark the wind vector, which consists of wind direction and speed. The resultant of these two vectors is the heading. The length of this line represents true air speed. The angle measured from the heading line toward the track line is known as drift. The angle measured from track line toward the heading line is known as wind correction angle. To demonstrate 
how to convert between track and heading, I will use two examples. Example one, track 270 degrees, drift five degrees left. To convert from track to heading using drift, we can use this mnemonic, HDT, which stand for heading, drift, and track. The standard calculation direction is to the right. Left is negative and right is positive. Thus, pi degree left is equal to negative pi degree. Insert the column with the appropriate value. We need to calculate toward the left as shown on the screen. Since we are calculating opposite to the standard direction, instead of 270 minus 5, it becomes 270 plus 5. Thus, the heading is 275 degrees. Example 2. Heading 165 degrees, wind correction angle is 5 degree right. As we have seen before, wind correction angle is the opposite of drift. That means wind correction angle of 5 degrees right is equal to 5 degree drift to the left. Insert the column with the appropriate value. Our calculation direction is to the right as shown on the screen and it is the same as the general direction. Thus, track is equal to 165 minus 5 which gives us 160 degrees. Bearing Bearing is defined as the horizontal angle between the direction of an object and another object or between it and that of true north or magnetic north. There are two types of bearing, relative bearing and datum bearing. The datum used for bearing is either true or magnetic. Relative bearing is simply the angle measure clockwise from the nose of the aircraft toward an object of interest. In this diagram, it is a house. Relative bearing is always measured clockwise, as shown on the screen. As a rule of thumb, the object on the left will have higher relative bearing compared to the object on the right. Datum bearing is the angle between the line from the aircraft to the direction datum and the line from the aircraft to the object of interest. The datum bearing consists of two components, which are datum heading and relative bearing. In general navigation subject, only two types of direction datum use. They are true and magnetic. True bearing is equal to true heading plus relative bearing, magnetic bearing is equal to magnetic heading plus relative bearing. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified when I publish a new content. Section 3. Direction Datum In this section, we will discuss on direction datum. I will only explain the first three datum in this video. Grid direction will be explained in the next video. True direction. True direction is measured from the true north. True north is also known as geographical north pole. True north is a fixed position. Earth is spinning on its axis eastward. The point where the spin exists intersect the surface of the Earth is the true north. True north on maps. For Mercator map, true north is toward the top of the map along all longitude as shown on the screen. For Lambert map, true north is toward the center of the map along all longitude. For polar stereographic map, 
North Polar Stereographic through North is converging toward the center of the map along all longitude, and South Polar Stereographic map through North is emanating outward from the center of the map along all longitude. On the screen is a Lambert conformal chart. Let's say we want to fly from Echo Delta November Papa to Echo Delta Mike Lima. The dark blue line mark cost of the flight. To find true cost, we need to measure the angle from true north of the cost line. True north is pointing upward along all longitude as shown on the screen. Align the center of the protractor to the intersection between longitude and cost line. Make sure the middle line of the protractor is aligned with the longitude line. Read the true cost clockwise from true north. It is 279 degrees true. Magnetic direction. Magnetic direction is measured from magnetic north. Magnetic north is not in the same position as true north. Magnetic north is not a fixed position. Earth acts like a giant magnet with its magnetic fields emanating from the Earth's core. The location of magnetic north is dependent on these magnetic fields. Magnetic north location is marked by the blue arrow. The magnetic south pole is not antipodal to magnetic north pole. A free suspended magnet will align itself to the magnetic field. This is the basis of a magnetic compass. Magnetic north moves at a rate of approximately 22 nautical miles yearly. The angle between true north and magnetic north from an observer position is known as variation. When magnetic north is to the east of true north, the variation is east. Mathematically, variation east is positive. When magnetic north is to the west of true north, the variation is west. Mathematically, variation west is negative. An aircraft flies on 120 degrees through track. Magnetic north is to the west of true north, with variation of 20 degree west. Magnetic track is measured clockwise from magnetic north. Thus, magnetic track is 140 degrees. An aircraft flies on 120 degrees through track. Magnetic north is to the east of true north with variation of 20 degree east. Thus, magnetic track is 100 degrees. In the first situation, when we have variation west, magnetic track has a larger value than true track. Whereas, in the second situation, we have variation east, magnetic track has a smaller value than true track. Thus, we can derive a rule. Variation west, magnetic best. Variation is magnetic least. On a map, variation lines are marked with dash blue line as shown on the screen. This line is known as isogonal. The line that represents zero variation is known as agonic line. For this situation, the variation is 1 degree east. By applying our previous rule, variation is magnetic least. Our magnetic cost is 278 degrees. Compass direction. 
Compass direction is measured from compass north. Compass north has no physical location on the Earth's surface. Compass north is caused by aircraft magnetism. Aircraft magnetism consists of soft iron magnetism and hard iron magnetism. In an ideal situation, when you want to fly on 360 degrees magnetic heading, you need to align your compass to 360 degrees. However, due to aircraft magnetism, sometimes the direction of magnetic north and compass north is not the same. To fly on 360 degrees magnetic heading, you need to offset the compass heading as shown on the screen. The angle between magnetic north and compass north is known as deviation. As for variation, deviation also has east and west value. When compass north is to the east of magnetic north, the deviation is east. Mathematically, deviation is is positive. When compass north is to the west of magnetic north, the deviation is west. Mathematically, deviation west is negative. An aircraft flies on 100 degrees magnetic track. Compass north is to the west of magnetic north with deviation of 10 degree west. Compass track is measured clockwise from compass north. Thus, compass track is 110 degrees. An aircraft flies on 100 degrees magnetic track. Compass north is to the east of magnetic north with division of 10 degree east. Thus, compass track is 090 degrees. In the first situation, when we have division west, compass track have larger value compared to magnetic track. Whereas, in the second situation, when we have division east, compass track has a smaller value than magnetic track. Thus, we can derive a rule. Division west, compass best, division east, compass least. Section 4. Conversion between direction datum. There are two methods to convert between direction datum. The first method is by using mnemonic and the second method is by using CDMVT table. Caution, after applying variation or deviation, only direction datum changes, not the direction line. First, we will look at the mnemonic method. The mnemonic that will be used is the same as the one that is being explained in the previous section. The conversion need to be in this order. For example, if you were given true direction, you need to convert it into magnetic direction using variation before you can convert it into compass direction using deviation. If you were given magnetic direction, you will have the option whether to convert it into true direction or compass direction using variation or deviation respectively. To demonstrate how to use this technique, I will use three examples. Example 1. Given true direction 135 degrees, variation 5 degree east, deviation 2 degree west, find magnetic direction and compass direction. Since we have true direction, first we need to convert it into magnetic direction by using variation. Variation is magnetic least. Magnetic direction is less than true direction by the value of variation. Thus, magnetic direction is 130 degrees. Next, we will convert magnetic direction into compass direction using deviation. Deviation west, compass best. Compass direction is more than magnetic direction by the value of deviation. Thus, 
compass direction is 132 degrees. Example 2. Given magnetic direction 185 degrees, variation 20 degrees west, deviation plus 5 degrees, find true direction and compass direction. Since we were given magnetic direction, we can calculate in any direction. We can either find true direction or compass direction first. For this example, I will find true direction first. To find true direction from magnetic direction, we need variation. Variation west, magnetic best. Magnetic direction is more than true direction by the variation amount. Thus, true direction is 165 degrees. Next, we need to convert magnetic direction into compass direction using deviation. We were given deviation of plus 5 degrees. Plus 5 degrees is equal to 5 degrees east. For variation and deviation value, plus represent east and minus represent west. Deviation is compass least. Since we have east deviation, compass direction is less than magnetic direction by the value of deviation. Thus, compass direction is 180 degrees. Example 3. Given compass direction 015 degrees, variation 20 degree west, deviation 15 degree east, find true direction and magnetic direction. Since we were given compass direction, we need to convert it into magnetic direction by using deviation. Deviation is compass least. Compass direction is less than magnetic direction. Thus, magnetic direction is 0, 3, 0 degrees. Next, we need to convert magnetic direction into true direction by using variation. Variation west, magnetic best. Since we have west variation, magnetic direction is more than true direction by the value of variation. Thus, true direction is 0, 1, 0 degrees. Next, we will look at the second method of conversion between direction datum by using CDMVT table. C stands for compass direction. D stands for deviation. M stands for magnetic direction. V stands for variation, T stands for true direction. To memorize this table, you can use this mnemonic. Can that man vote twice? General calculation direction is to the right. East is positive and west is negative. I will use previous examples to explain the usage of CDMVT table. Example 1. Fill up the table with the appropriate value as shown on the screen. 2 west equal to minus 2 and 5 east equal to plus 5. Next, we need to calculate from true to magnetic. Since we are calculating opposite of the general direction, we need to reverse the calculation. Instead of 135 plus 5, we need to calculate 135 minus 5, which gives us 130. Next, we need to convert from magnetic to compass. We are calculating in reverse. Instead of 130 minus 2, we calculate 130 plus 2. Thus, compass direction is 132. Example 2. Fill up the table with the appropriate value. Since magnetic direction is in the middle and we have both deviation and variation, we can calculate true direction or compass direction without particular order. For this example, I will calculate compass direction first. We are calculating opposite to the general direction. Thus, 185 minus 5 
equals 180. Next, I will calculate true direction. This time, we are calculating in the correct direction. Therefore, 185 minus 20 equals 165. Example 3. Fill up the table with the appropriate value. Since we were given compass direction, first we need to convert compass direction into magnetic direction. After we get the magnetic direction value, then we can convert it into true direction. We are calculating in a direction that agrees with the general calculation direction. Thus, 0, 1, 5 plus 15 equals 0, 3, 0. Next, calculate true direction by using magnetic direction and variation. 0, 3, 0 minus 20 equals 0, 1, 0. Compass Division Cut Compass division cut usually placed in front of the standby compass or magnetic compass on an aircraft in the form of a table. The row title 4 represents magnetic heading and the row title steer represents compass heading. For example, if you want to fly 090 degrees magnetic heading, you need to steer the aircraft so that your magnetic compass will indicate 088 degrees. To find the compass north, we need to measure the value of compass direction counterclockwise from compass heading. The angle between magnetic north and compass north is deviation. In this case, the deviation is 2 degrees east. The more practical way to find deviation from compass deviation cut during examination is by using CDMVT table. Example, find the value of deviation when you fly on magnetic heading 150 degrees. Insert magnetic heading and compass heading into the appropriate column as shown on the screen. Since 152 is more than 150 by 2 degrees, the value of deviation is minus 2 degrees or 2 degrees west. What do you think of this video? Please let me know in the comment section below. And if you find the video beneficial, please like it and share with others. By doing so, you will help other people to find the video. If you want to learn more about ATPL or other aviation related stuff, subscribe now by clicking on the round subscribe icon. Please check out my other video by clicking on the rectangular box. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.